Okay, finally we are at the end of this tutorial. What we need to do is create last script that will now be responsible for selecting the unit and directing the movement system and the unit to move. So we are going to create a new script and let's call it unit manager. So this will be a, a high level class that will contain the reference to our hex grid, private hex grid, hex grid that we are going to assign through the inspector to the movement system. Again, this will be a serialized private field that will be assignable through the inspector called the movement system. We are going to have a public bool player turn, player's turn, get and private set, it will be set to be true and we are going to basically use it to say if this is the player's turn or not. We are going to have a serialized field private unit, selected unit and private hex, previously selected hex. Now those parameters will be necessary for us to be able to deselect or select our unit as well as to decide if the player has clicked on the same hex as previously or not so that we know if we want to highlight the new path or not. Next we are going to have a public void handle unit selected method that will take in game object unit and we are going to basically assign it to our unity event from our selection manager so we can keep it uh, the architecture using the events rather than assigning them directly uh, those uh, methods to the selection manager or having the reference to the selection manager in our unit uh, manager. So if this is not player turn, simply return. Next we are going to as uh, access the unit, unit reference equals unit component unit. So we are going to get the unit class. And next we are going to check if, check if the same unit selected passing this unit reference. Right click here, quick actions and generate this method. And this will basically check if we have selected the same method we are going to return. Else we are going to have prepare unit for movement method passing again unit reference Right click, quick action, generate this method. Okay, let's find what check if the same unit selected does. Basically, we are going to check if this selected unit equals the unit reference. If this is true, we are going to call clear old selection method, return true. Else, we are going to return false. Right click on this, quick actions, and generate this. This will basically clear the selection and deselect our character and hide the range. Next we have handle terrain selected method that is public void and takes in another game object. This one will be a hex. This will be a hex game object. Now if selected unit is null or player turn is false, we want to return because we do not want to select a separate hex using our unit manager. Maybe there will be another script that will handle uh, showing uh, what is on this hex. But for our simple movement system we do not need to handle this. Now if indeed we have our selected unit and this is our turn, we are going to get access to our hex using the hex game object dot get component hex. Next we are going to again perform a couple of checks. So if handle hex out of range, selected hex hex cords to access the hex coordinates, or handle selected hex in unit hex. So we have either clicked on the unit outside of the range of the uh, unit range, or we have selected on the hex that our unit is standing on. So this will basically mean that we want to either deselect our uh, unit or uh, prevent the movement. So right click on those quick actions and generate both of those. All of those takes the hex, hex cords so that we can access those hexes. In case any of those is true, we are going to return from this method. We do not want to do anything. Else we are going to have handle target hex selected, passing the selected hex reference as the, the hex coordinates actually we do not need to do this because we can pass get them from the selected hex next we are going to have prepare unit for movement from our handle unit selected method and what we are going to do here is if selected unit is not null we are going to clear all selection next we are going to set this selected unit equals unit reference we are going to select this unit using the selected unit that select and we are going to call movement system show range for this unit and for this hex grid. So basically this will show us the range of the player and we are going to be able to select the hex that we want to travel to. Next our clear old uh, selection method. This will set the previously selected hex to be null, selected unit deselect if we have the selected unit and movement system hide range this hex grid so to hide the selected hexes. And this selected unit equals null. Okay, so next we have a hand private void handle target hex selected. This was the method that took hex uh, selected hex and the position. 
Now I have modified it so it not takes this position. And now we are going to have if else statement. So what can happen when we select a hex? Either we have no previously selected hex or this is a new hex compared to the previously selected one. So basically this will mean that we are, have selected a new hex on our map and we need to update the path that we are showing. So we are going to set previously selected hex to the selected hex and we are going to use power movement system to show a new path, selected hex, hex cords and this hex grid. So we basically show a new path in green to the newly selected hex. Now if we have selected the same hex that we have previously selected and we are viewing the path to it, this will mean that the user has basically double clicked on this position, uh, meaning that they, need, they want to move to this position. So we are going to have movement system move unit, selected unit this hex grid, player turn is false, we do not want to move our player until it reaches its destination, selected unit movement finished plus equals return, uh, reset turn, right click here quick actions and generate this method. As you might recall this was an event action, so this was called when the unit has finished moving in our movement coroutine. So basically we are going to inform our system that we want to again set the player turn to be true and again be able to move our unit and we are going to clear all selection to hide the range okay and next we have our handle selected hex is unit hex we are going to get the vector 3 hex position and we are going to compare this hex position equals hex grid get closest hex to the selected unit transform position if we have selected the same hex basically what i want to do is deselect our uh, selected unit and clear the old selection so that we want to deselect the unit if we click on the unit again or on the hex underneath the unit, else we are going to return false. The second check we had was private bool handle hex out of range. So if movement system is hex in range, we are going to pass the hex position. If this is false, we are going to simply debug hex out of range and return true, else we are going to return false. Now here you could simply play some sound effect or do something else. This is just a simple feedback to the player to inform them that this uh, hex is out of range of the unit's range. And our last method will be private void reset turn and this was what we have assigned to our movement finished event and this is basically setting selected unit movement finished minus equal this uh, method. So we want to reset this possibility that the selected unit will reset our turn and we want to set the player turn to be true. Okay, it was a lot of code, but we can save our unit manager and go back to Unity and finally test our system. Okay, let's create a new game object in our hierarchy, let's call it unit manager. And let's assign here our unit manager. We need to assign our hex grid, our movement system, and the selected unit will be assigned when we click on this. Now to actually be able to click on this, we need to go to our selection system, and on unit selected, let's add unit manager. And we had function, unit manager, and we had handle terrain or unit. On unit selected, we need to handle the unit. On terrain selected, we need to assign our unit manager, select uh, no function, unit manager, and handle ter terrain selected. And before we start the game, let's select our shader, because I think that changing the shader changed our preset for our shaders. As you can see, the glow power and the glow color has been reset. So let's select our shader graph glow shader that we use for our hexes. Let's set the glow color to be the intensity to be zero and the color to be white. Okay, and I want to uncheck the dynamic glow. Now, if we save our project and press play, we should see now that if we select our character, we can we have this character glowing in green. We can select our unit, we can see the green path, and we can click again. And now our player is moving and we cannot really select anything until it is uh, done moving. Now we can again select our uh, player and we have one issue that we are not resetting our path that we have selected. Another issue that we have is that our hex underneath our player is selected. Now we do not have to remove this, this looks pretty good, but we can of course remove this if we want to. So let's stop the game and let's fix those issues. First of all we can go to our scripts, highlight, uh, glow highlight. Okay, so here when we find our reset glow highlight, what it did here is called item set color to be glow color, original glow color. But one problem is that we are checking if glow is false, we are returning. 
So what we can do is here is glow equals false. Uh, we should call basically the same um, method. So what we can do is either remove this check here and basically always call this. And next we can simply call this reset glow uh, highlight. Insert this toggle glow to reset this highlight. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, let's press play and let's see if it worked. Let me select this player. Let's move one space here. Let's select it again. And now everything is highlighted in white instead of in green. So now our fix has worked, I think, well. Let's try it again. Let's select our player. And it works exactly as we have intended. Now, in case you do not want to highlight this hex below our unit when showing the range, what we need to do is go to our movement system. We need to find the show range method when we show the range. We need to calculate the vector 3 int unit position using hex grid get closest hex unit uh, selected unit transform position and this for loop which highlights the positions. We need to check if our unit position is equal to our hex position. In this case we want to simply continue to the next position. And now if we press play in our game, we should see that now our hex underneath the player is never highlighted when we are showing the range. Now it should be highlighted when we are showing the path. So now it should work. Okay, this was a lot of writing code, but now we have our simple hex movement system that we can extend to have more units and bigger map and more dif uh, different types of terrain. And everything should be working now fine and we can deselect our player when we click on the hex or on the character so it should all work fine big thanks to my patrons thanks to who i can create those tutorials if you want to learn more about making 2d games in unity i encourage you to check out my video courses the link will be in the description of this video and as always Subscribe to the channel, drop a like, let me know what you think about those tutorials in the comment section and if you want to explore how to make the animations for this character or how to implement the A-star pathfinding algorithm. Okay, thanks for watching, take care!